What's up guys, eDrone here. Today, we're going to be doing the full review of the new Sub 250 Nano 20. Stay tuned. This uh, video actually wasn't supposed to come out until the following week. Um, Walksnail Caddx did send this out to review. This is the Walksnail uh, VRX. And the issue is uh, I wanted to go ahead and test this system out first with a 5-inch quadcopter using the HD kit that they sent along with the VRX module. Um, so I went ahead and ordered a, a new frame and actually going to be giving that away in another video um, when we hit 10K subscribers on this channel. So you're not going to want to miss out for that. So make sure you're subscribed. Click that bell icon so you get notified first when I put out new content. I didn't want Cadex to, to have to wait a whole other week to get the review out. So... I went ahead and picked up this Sub 250 Nanofly 20. Um, originally, I did pick this up because I was curious about testing the walk snail version and testing this out after I did the 5 inch uh, walk snail video. However, we're going to be uh, actually reviewing this Sub 250 Nano 20 as well as this will be my first thoughts, first flights with the uh, Caddx Walk Snail VRX module which uh, is going to be attached to my HD Zero goggles. This is the Sub 250 Nano Fly 20. Um, it's a little bit larger than my Sub 250 Nano Fly 16. Um, and this is using the Avatar Mini 1S module. Uh, this also came with Express LRS, which I don't have. All I needed to do to get this ready to fly for my setup was go ahead and solder one of my Crossfire Nano receivers into this little guy here. And um, luckily there's pads on the flight controller that will allow for that to happen. Go ahead and solder up the Crossfire uh, Nano receiver and then go ahead and turn off the SPI receiver in Betaflight and turn on Crossfire and go ahead and get this wired up. It wasn't the easiest job soldering up the Crossfire to this flight controller. The flight controller pads are a little bit small. It's really not that easy. However, I really like the way that the Sub-250 Nanofly comes apart. It's just got four screws, and the screws basically run all the way through the bottom of the frame, through the stack components, and into the actual TPU canopy, and that's how everything's secured, and it was really easy to take apart, and obviously really easy to assemble. So, yeah, if you want to go ahead and learn how to solder up a crossfire receiver to this, uh, I, I'll definitely show you how to do that. It wasn't too bad. Just a little bit of the soldering was a little bit difficult. All right, all you got to do is solder up the 5-volt ground RX and TX on the flight controller here. You're going to run your RX to your TX and your TX to your RX. Using the Crossfire Nano Receiver, went ahead and soldered it up to the flight controller. And then all I did was just zip-tied the Crossfire Receiver underneath of the canopy as well as the Mini Immortal T. That's what we use for this. One thing I will say about Sub 250 is I really like their build quality. Um, the build quality on their uh, bind and fly uh, plug and play quadcopters seems to be of really decent quality. Um, I like the screws that they use in this one to, to screw down the stack and the canopy. And all in all, the, the, the build quality just seems to be of definitely premium design. Um, I really like all the extras that they include in the box. However, this one does not come with the batteries. So you're going to need to purchase the batteries separate. I like that it does come with the GMB connectors. I feel like you get a little bit more uh, power on tap with those. Same thing I use with the Nanofly 16. We're going to go ahead and take this Sub 250 Nanofly. We're going to go ahead and take it outside. And we're going to fly it around my neighborhood where I'm used to flying HD0. Um, I am primarily a HD0 pilot. So this is going to be from me coming from HD0 flying primarily to testing out the Walksnail Avatar VRX module. Uh, and I'm really curious to see how I'm going to like it and how it performs around my neighborhood compared to my HD0. So we're going to go ahead and need to install the Walksnail VRX module. Going to go ahead. Thank you. Shout out to Vampire for the 3D printed clip here. I'll put a link in the description. It basically just snaps on the front of the goggles. And then we have the mini HDMI cable as well as the splitter cable that we're going to use. And now... We're all ready to go ahead and test out this Walk Snail Avatar VRX. So I just got done setting this guy up in Betaflight. Most of the settings are pretty much all ready to go. Um, everything seemed to be pretty, pretty much self-explanatory. 
Uh, the switches were all set up. All the uh, configuration was set up as far as the uh, arming at 180 degrees. So very impressed with the way the Sub-250 set this up out of the box. Batteries we're going to be using for the uh, Sub-250 Nanofly 20 are these GMB 1S 380 milliamp LiPos here. All right, we've got our power plugged in, and we're going to go ahead and push on the bind button. You see now we have a red light. Now with the VRX module powered up, we're going to go ahead and push on the bind button. Get a beep. You see we got a green flashing light, indicating that we are now bound to the Walksnail VRX module. Pretty simple. Having an issue with arming the motors, and not all the motors are spinning up. So I think the way we can fix this is if we raise the, the, uh, the motor idle value a little bit to where all of the motors are spinning. You can see that front one struggling. And then when you go to give it throttle, it just kind of spins out and it doesn't take off. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into beta flight, increase the motor idle value, and then try again. All right, here's the Walksnail VRX DVR. And I wanted to do a quick little flight indoors, just kind of taking a look at the system, how it does in the light and the dark areas. And honestly, this actually looks better than what I was seeing in the goggles uh, in the shadows. It was really hard to see in the shadows with this particular camera, especially when you go from a light area to a dark area. It almost took it a little bit of time to transition, and it was kind of disorienting. All right, we're going to go ahead and update the firmware on the Walksnail Avatar 1S board here to the latest version. And then we're also going to update the firmware in the VRX to the latest version. And uh, that way, when we go to fly this outside, we'll see how much of a, a difference it makes running the newest firmware. Basically, it's, it's pretty simple. We're going to be plugging this one end into the USB of our computer. We're going to plug this end here into the Avatar 1S board. We're going to go to the Caddx uh, Walksnail website, and I'll put links in the description for that. And basically, we're going to just save the newest firmware onto this board right in our PC. Pretty simple. For the VRX, we're going to save the firmware on a micro SD card and then put the micro SD card in the VRX module. Your VRX module is not going to blow up. It just beeps when it's updating the firmware. Said so this can take about eight minutes. Make sure you got a fully charged battery. Uh, one thing I noticed when flying this around is the HD0 cable that I used to use with the HD0 VRX. This voltage regulator inside here is getting super, super hot when using the walk snail VRX and uh, for some reason the HD zero goggles kept resetting when using this cable so definitely recommend don't using this cable I think the power draw is just too much um, for what this voltage regulator can handle it's trying to pull too much for it and it's just restricting it and having issues so I went ahead and hooked up my regular uh, lithium ion pack and I just put the little splitter on there and that seemed to be working a lot better this is the newest firmware for the walks nail I'm now flying behind myself and you can see a little bit of the smearing that uh, that I've been hearing about see we got a little bit of the uh, the red there indicating our signal was getting low keep in mind this whole area is uh, has a lot of Wi-Fi interference, and this little guy only has a little dipole on here. So, okay, so definitely struggling a little bit with the with the power going up, and doing the big punch outs. This is on one S. See how we do around these trees. Oh yeah, getting real bad around here, and you see we're getting in the red around here. So. Not going to be able to get real far with this guy, not with the dipole in a high Wi-Fi area. There was a full punch. I noticed it takes a little bit more uh, to recover as well. A little bit of a bobble there. So 
yeah, flying it in acro, it's okay. It's not bad. It feels heavy. I'm not going to lie. It does feel kind of heavy. And don't get real long flight times either. Back here, we're getting the stuttering. So getting a little bit of stuttering as well as the smearing. That's, that's really interesting, the way it, it handles the brake up. Quite different than HD Zero. It just does that smearing. Yeah, as you can tell, the, the batteries are taking quite a hit. Camera tilt's not real high up on this one, so. I do like the, the image quality. Um, it's really clear, it's nice and bright. This is on the newest firmware as well. Oh yeah, it does struggle when doing those uh, big flips and punch outs. It does struggle a little bit. Okay, we've gotten a little bit more flight time than I was expecting out of this little guy. Oh, okay, we've completely lost video. All right, so want to be careful when you're getting low on your voltage there because the video system will just completely die on you. So keep an eye on your voltage when you're flying this little guy. Yeah, the, the image does look really good. But it, it's not, it, it's definitely getting some prop wash doing the acro flying. So I definitely think this is definitely made more for, you know, maybe like indoor racing, uh, maybe a little bit of indoor flying. But yeah, uh, as far as the acro flying, it's not doing the greatest. It seems, it feels a little bit heavy in the air. And I'm just flying this stock out of the box, so whatever tune comes on it, that's what we're flying. So we're reviewing this as it comes out of the box. The only thing I've changed is the firmware on here is the newest Walk Snail firmware for both the 1S VTX as well as the VRX module. Uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead and transition and, and talk about the actual flight system here, the, the, the Walk Snail. You know, I must say the image quality definitely looks, you know, pretty good. Um, it's very clear, crisp. However, the smearing definitely, I can see where the smearing can be a little bit disorienting uh, when it goes to start the smearing, when the signal starts to go out. I do like that there's like a little red box that comes around. Let's see if I can get it right there. I like the little red box that comes around kind of warning you like, hey, your video you know, is getting pretty bad. That's a nice little feature to have. And this little guy just has a dipole antenna, so, you know, I can't expect too much out of it. But all in all, um, I do like the Walk Snail video system. Now, will it be replacing all my HD Zero? We'll talk about that in just a minute. But yeah, it's very interesting. It's very, very unique to be able to try a different system and just kind of see the different ways that this system handles, you know, the, the, the breakup. So I'm just gonna fly this guy around and we'll bring it back in and put a fresh pack on. Third pack here. And I will say, if you're gonna pick up this little guy, you're definitely gonna wanna pick up some batteries because this thing just chews through these batteries. Uh, I'm getting, you know, around, you know, a two minute flight times. And then it's just, it's just killing it, just zonking it, but. I'm gonna fly this around in Acro a little bit and just kind of see how it does uh, over here. But yeah, the smearing definitely, I, I don't think it's disorienting. I like that the smearing takes place on the bottom of the screen, mostly, and a little bit on the top. But it looks like it does try to focus the center area and keep that clear for the most part. So that, that I am noticing. Uh, here you can see we're getting nice and clear and then watch how this just smears. Oh yeah, and it just starts getting real bad and distorted. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of the uh, disconnect as well from the lag. And like I said, there's a lot of Wi-Fi interference here, so this is definitely a good, brutal test to see how this system can take the uh, the Wi-Fi and all that break up around here. Yeah, but definitely keep your eye on, on your voltage here. You're, you're not gonna get too much more than about two minute flight times using the GMB uh, 380 milliamp 1S packs. But for 1S, you know, the, the fact that we're actually able to fly 
a high definition system on 1S alone is pretty impressive, I have to say. Um, you know, that, that, that part I can't be too critical on, but yeah, it's just, it's just amazing. I never really thought that we would be here as fast as we are as far as high definition, you know, for, for 1S. But yeah, here we are, 140. You can see we're top. We're starting to get 3.4 on the voltage. So you know, not going to be too much longer than like two minutes at the most for flight times for this guy. But yeah, the image quality looks fantastic uh, when it's not all smeared up. Go ahead and bring her in for a landing. All right, fourth pack here. And I'm just gonna fly down here a little bit of ways and just kind of see how it does with the Wi-Fi. Not too bad on a, a single little, you know, little whip antenna. Does get a substantial amount of prop wash though. I, and I don't know if that's just from the excess weight. And I did, you know, make this a little bit heavier by adding the uh, the little mini Immortal T antenna for the Crossfire, as well as the Crossfire receiver. So. That may have a lot to do with the, the flight performance. If you fly this out of the box with the e ELRS, you know, uh, the, the receiver's built into the flight controller and the antenna is a lot smaller, so it's gonna be a lot lighter. So that, that may be a lot of what's going on with the flight performance. But it's just crazy that that, that 1S can just punch up there like that, isn't it? Yeah, right back here is where it really struggles with the uh, the smearing. Really see. And then I, I get a little bit of stuttery feeling as well. It just kind of feels like it's stuttering. Now this is the 720, 60 frames per second. And we'll try it on 1080 just to see how it, how it does. But yeah, definitely consistently getting about two minute flight times out of this little guy. Two minutes. And, you know, you may get a longer flight time if you're not running an additional receiver like I am. So I'm actually running the Crossfire Nano off the 5 volt. And it has the SPI ELRS receiver built in as well, even though I do have it turned off. I'm pretty sure it's still consuming some power. So take all that, you know, into account when, uh, when you hear about this review that I'm giving. All right, 158, and you can see we're at 3.4. So yeah, consistently two minutes. And here's the 1080 mode here, and we're gonna go ahead and just try it out. <laughs> but yeah, the quality looks good. Yeah. See how it flies. Getting some weird lines. See that? I don't know if you can see that, but there's some weird lines I'm getting in the actual screen here. Huh, I don't know if that's a bug or what. This is the newest firmware of the, uh, the walk snail, so that's that's definitely going to be distracting there. There's weird lines. So 1080 mode not working too well. It's flying okay. Definitely seems a little bit stuttery though. Yeah, it, maybe if you were doing like some cruising or something and not really too much acro flying, maybe you would go ahead and run the 1080 mode, but I don't see really much advantage to running the 1080. Seems like way more smearing and these weird lines are very distracting. All right, let's go ahead and, and bring it back. I'm not really too happy with the 1080 mode here. we will switch it back to 720 and see if I can get a higher uh, FPS. Yeah. All right, the higher frame rate feels a lot better. Definitely feels way more connected now. Doesn't really help the flight performance, but the feeling feels a lot more connected. Definitely feels a lot smoother with the higher frame rate. So if you're gonna fly this with the HD Zero goggles, definitely try the 720p high frame rate setting. I definitely feel way more connected to it, way more connected. Getting a little bit of those little screen little flutters like I did on 1080 but not not you know as bad as with the 1080 and that that may be something to do with my firmware on my HD zero goggles 
The firmware on these HD Zero goggles is not the newest. It's a little bit older version, but it's been working really well for me, so I haven't changed it yet. Okay, this feels a lot better. I This is probably the best setting, I think, to fly uh, the walk snail on with the HD Zero goggles. Big punch out. We're gonna finish it out strong with this last pack. Oh yeah, with a crash as well. Ah, it's not gonna recover. Where did I crash? Oh, uh, I think we were right there. Oh, the grass is too tall for it, but that's to be expected. I mean, it's just a little one S little guy here fitting the palm of your hand. That's to be expected. All right, guys, final thoughts on the uh, Sub 250 Nanofly 20 as well as the uh, Walk Snail Avatar Caddx system. Um, first of all, let's go over the Sub 250. Um, I think this definitely could use a little bit of work, um, and it may be just because of the way I modified it and added the receiver, um, and the extra weight may have something to do with the flight performance, but it doesn't fly the greatest. Now, keep in mind, this is a 1S, so my expectations may be a little bit higher um, than what it really should be but it just overall felt kind of heavy in the air and it just didn't feel like it had a lot of good performance with the tune out of the box. Now, I'm not saying that you couldn't tune this um, maybe yourself and get a little bit more performance out of it, but the, the motors on this, I don't know, they, maybe they seem to be just a little bit underpowered um, for the weight of the quadcopter. So, you know, flight performance wasn't as great as I, as I was hoping or expecting. Um, Let's go ahead and go over the flight time as well. So two minute flight time, I mean, not really that bad, I guess, when you consider it's only running 1S LiPo. Um, so if you're gonna you know, pick this up, and I'll put links down in the description. If you're gonna pick this up, make sure you pick up plenty of 1S batteries to go along with it. You're gonna wanna have <laughs> a barrage of batteries when you go to take this out um, so you, that you can stay in the air you know, for longer since you're only gonna be flying about two minutes per flight. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the, the Caddx, uh, the walk snail system and my experiences with it overall. You know, I have to say, I, there's a lot of things I do like about the system. Um, it was fairly easy to set up, fairly easy to, uh, you know, flash the firmware, put new firmware on it. Binding it to the transmitter was, was fairly easy, fairly simple. Um, I feel like it's just a little bit more difficult than like DJI. Um, but definitely maybe a little bit easier than HD Zero as far as getting everything set up, getting everything bound and connected and flashing the firmware. Um, you know, I do really like the image quality. It looks really clear. The colors are nice and crisp and, and vibrant out of the box, so to speak. So I was really happy with the way the video system looked. Now, as far as the way it handles the breakup, um, the smearing, I didn't find it to be too distracting, but the stuttering really did kind of throw me back. Um, I feel like the stuttering messes with my connection, my feeling with the quadcopter way more than the smearing does. And that might just be because I come from HD zero and I'm just used to a, a, a you know, a consistent feel on the, on the overall link of the quadcopter the whole entire time. No matter the degradation of the signal itself, the feel of the, of the quadcopter stays the same. Whereas this one tends to get a little bit laggy and just feel a little bit more of a disconnect. Um, I do like the fact that this has onboard DVR. I think that's really awesome. Uh, HD Zero does not have onboard DVR yet. Uh, so I think that's a really, uh, really cool perk about this system is it does have onboard DVR, which you can go ahead and pull off and use for sharing, especially for something of this size. It's nice to be able to have that onboard DVR to go ahead and use it for sharing and posting. So definitely happy with that. Um, I really do like the camera camera as it seems to be of good quality it handled the signal pretty well for just having a little dipole antenna on here i'm sure you could modify this antenna a little bit and put a, a little bit more of a a better omnidirectional antenna the only issue with that is you're going to be adding more weight so it might not be worth it for the little bit of extra difference you might get on the signal you're probably going to be suffering in the flight performance so i would just try to keep this guy as light as possible to get the overall best feeling of it now, as far as the flight times, I don't know if me adding the Crossfire receiver and the fact that this is running the ELRS uh, SPI receiver built into the flight controller had anything to do with the, you know, shorter flight times, and it may have. Um, you know, I just hooked the, the, the Crossfire to the 5-volt uh, 
regulated pad on the flight controller. So I'm pulling five volts for the flight controller. You're also pulling for the walk snail system as well. And then if you do have the um, ELRS built into the flight controller, I'm not sure if me just turning that off in beta flight actually stops it from actually powering up and consuming power. That I'm not sure of. So that could have something to do with a little bit of short flight times. But with this particular setup with the Crossfire, expect about two minutes of flight time at the max. Um, once you hit two minutes, you're going to want to make sure you have this guy landed or get back to yourself quick as possible. Because once you do get below a certain voltage, the video system will just drop out. Um, and you will just crash wherever you are if you're flying FPV. So keep that in mind. You know, at the end of the day, I have to keep reminding myself that this is a 1S toothpick here that's running a high definition digital video system for video, you know, video link. So that to me is pretty impressive. So, you know, even with all its downfalls, I think that the technology is improving and it's, it's, it's awesome to see, you know, how fast and innovative the technology has come for our FPV video system. So huge shout out to Walksnail and Cadex for sending me out the VRX module. Um, I really do like it. I like the menu system. It's really easy laid out, you know, easy to use, uh, easy to navigate. And everything has worked very good for me. I've not had any hiccups with the actual video system itself as far as, you know, binding, connecting to the transmitter, uh, changing the settings and so forth. The DVR has recorded both on the video transmitter unit as well as the module here. It doesn't add, you know, a ton of extra weight to my goggles. Uh, it definitely reminds me of the days when I was using my HDO2s with my HD0 uh, VRX module. So it definitely reminds me of that. But uh, definitely, you know, something that I love being able to have multiple options when it comes to flying. So I've got the HD Zero goggles I can use as well as the uh, HDMI in. I can use the, the Walksnail Caddx VRX so I can use anything that's Walksnail or Caddx as well. So it's really nice to have, you know, that option. But make sure you stay tuned to the channel because we're also going to be reviewing the Avatar HD Kit V2 uh by walk snail and that's gonna we're gonna put that in a five inch quadcopter frame and build out a whole new frame with that video with that video transmitter and we're going to be doing a review on that as well so make sure you stay tuned click that bell icon so you get notified first when i put out new content and live streams but thank you guys so much for watching please please like share subscribe and until next time guys thanks so much for watching e-drone out